Alright, it's time to finish off the Black Ops series with Black Ops Cold War. From what we've heard, the development of this game was rough. They had to start it before finishing Black Ops 4, and at least part of the team had to go work on Vanguard before they could finish this game, which seems to have had an impact on all four maps. Let's start with D-Machina, which is, for the most part, an original map, but it does feature the Nocturne Toten Bunker. It has new textures and some new rooms, but it is definitely made from the Chronicles version of the map. The biggest giveaways are things like this hole in the wall, or the damage on the ceiling here, which are exactly the same as they were in Chronicles. Firebase Z is based off the level Fracture Jaw. The spawn room can actually be found in this village, and it's very similar to its zombies variant. This alley was converted into a room, which also fills the gap on the roof so that players can cross over. The door that leads to Ravenov's room is not present in the campaign, and the building to the left where the Wonder Fizz would be found is arranged differently, with the stairs basically being flipped. Peck's quarters are new, with a door being added to this hallway. A balcony was also added to that building, and an awning was added to the other so that players could jump between the two. But the firebase part of the map is a different story. According to the lore, the map takes place in the same area as Firebase Ripcord from the campaign, which would be here, but as you can see, the map as we know it is not present. None of the buildings we see in Zombies are here, it's just a typical US Army camp. Now it very well may have been built on top of the same hill, but the layout of the map itself is entirely unique. Mowarder Toten comes from the level Brick in the Wall. In order to break up the large open space on the streets, there are cars and tanks scattered about, and the checkpoints were moved closer together and buried under piles of rubble. The buildings here were also altered so that this alley could be bigger and more accessible. The roof of the Korber building was redone, now having more pathways, and the bar where you meet the informant is still present and almost exactly the same. The name of the building was changed, which now translates to The Crazy Bar, being a reference either to Verrucht or maybe The Crazy Place from Origins. The bathroom is also still visible, but blocked, and unlike the campaign, you cannot exfil through here. The subways are also very similar to what we see in the campaign level, although the layout doesn't seem to be exactly the same. The platforms look like they've been moved around, and all the other rooms down here seem to be unique to zombies. And fun fact, they added this yellow telephone booth for Mowered or Toten, which is the same one Samantha uses in the D-Machina cutscene. Finally, we have Forsaken, which comes straight from the campaign level Red Light, Green Light. This map is kind of interesting because, unlike the previous ones, it is based on a more iconic level from the campaign, it's an area that you spend a lot more time in, and you are encouraged to freely explore it, so it feels like a much more blatant example of reusing assets than the other maps. And honestly, the map is probably 90% the same from the campaign, but there are a couple of changes that are worth mentioning. We'll start with the spawn room, which is from this area in the campaign level where you first infiltrate the base. As expected, the objects in the room have either been changed or moved. The structures that do carry over are the same, but a couple seem to be slightly modified. This platform is wider, and the windows on this building were moved up to fit a zombie spawn. But the most interesting thing about this room is that it was rotated. When we stand on this platform in the campaign, the main facility is on the left, but in zombies, it's on the right. I'm guessing they did this so that they could spawn players on these crates in the corner and still give them a good view of the building. We'll next look at the Anytown section of the map, which is mostly identical to its campaign counterpart, but did seem to have some changes made to improve the flow of the map. The layout of the arcade and the catwalks in the video store were altered a little bit. This window was changed to a door to give better access to the street, and the corner of this building was changed to be more angled. Some stairs were put up on the video store to give access to the roofs, and bridges were put up to connect the buildings. This gate leading to the fuel processing area is still present, but the stairway and platform above it were removed, now allowing you to go straight through. And finally, there was a pile of wreckage added to break up the area. For the command center, we'll find that the room was actually made larger for zombies, most likely to fit all the stuff they wanted to put in there. The shutters are also open in the campaign, which lets you see the area where you would fight the Forsaken in zombies. The campaign level ends with an on-rails vehicle section, which does prevent us from freely exploring the rest of the map. It starts with you driving through the boss fight arena, the trees have been removed so that you can actually look up and shoot Zykov, and the gazebo in the middle is gone because, well, you can destroy it in the campaign, so it'd be weird if Kravchenko rebuilt it. Next, you go through this tunnel, which is the same one you go through in Forsaken, but with ladders and a couple of the catwalks were lowered for accessibility. And finally, we go down Main Street. The cars on the street were replaced and rearranged for zombies, and this pile of wreckage was put up to keep you out of the tunnel, but otherwise seems to be exactly the same. The only area that I did not find anywhere else is this office slash labs area. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this was created for Forsaken. 
Oh yeah, and the Chronicles version of Nocturne on Toten makes another appearance. It has all the same indicators that we see in D Machina, plus a couple extras since this is a more pure version of the map. So what I think's interesting about this game is how more and more areas are reused in each map. D Machina was mostly original, other than the bunker. Firebase Z only used the village as the spawn area. Mauer der Toten was maybe half reused areas, half new ones. And Forsaken is almost entirely reused. Perhaps this is because they had less and less time to make each map, forcing them to recycle other areas to stay on schedule. I personally don't think of it as a criticism. The game is still fun, and even though they had to take some shortcuts, they stuck to their vision for the game, which I respect. Anyway, that's it for the round based maps, now let's look at Outbreak. We'll start with Armada, which is basically exactly the same from the multiplayer map of the same name. In fact, I think all these maps are just copy and pasted from the multiplayer. Oh, and don't even get me started on Onslaught.